What's going on guys? It's Eric from Intelligent Quads coming back at you with another video. Today I've got an epic open source package for you guys that's really going to help you guys out with our situation here in 2020. A lot of you guys had access to these high powered servers in your guys' labs, but now with our situation, we can't access those and we're stuck with some of the limited resources of our laptops and the computers we have at home. So what we're going to do with this, with this open source package is set up a server in our lab, which will allow us allow our laptops to access the gazebo server and allow us to utilize all the power of our machines in the lab without having to be in the lab. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do to install Gazebo Web is to make sure we've got Gazebo installed. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using Ubuntu 2020 with Gazebo 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got the Gazebo 11 dependency as well as some of these other ones. Now that we got our dependencies installed, let's go ahead and clone Gazebo Web. The next thing we'll do is CD into Gazebo Web. So at the current time of this recording, the release of Gazebo Web is not building on 2004. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the dev branch, which allows us to build with Gazebo 11 on 2004. So in order to do that, we'll just do a simple git checkout fix build GZ11. Next, we're going to have to source user share gazebo and then the setup.sh. This is going to put all the models that we have on our gazebo path so that when we build, the web server is going to generate all the assets that we need um, for people to see them on the web. The next thing we need to do is install n. And the reason we're going to do this is because n allows us to install old versions of Node. And gazebo web is a little bit of an older web package that is currently not building on the current version of node so what we're going to do is install n and then use n to check out 8.14 version of node and then we're going to check out 8.14 of node and now as you can see we have version 8.14.0 installed the next thing is, like I said, this is an older package, so it depends on Python 2. And in Ubuntu 2004, the default version of Python is Python 3. So in order to make sure that we're going to use Python 2 when we build the web server, we're going to use update alternatives and select Python 2. And then we're going to press 1. So you guys are wondering what update alternatives is. And that's basically a package that comes with Ubuntu, and it allows you to basically just select between different versions of various different uh, programs. So we're gonna use that for Python. And finally, now we're just gonna go ahead and run the build process for Gazebo Web. And to do that, we're gonna run npm run deploy dash 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 m. And basically what this is gonna do is it's going to build our web server and optimize it for mobile. There's a couple other options for building this. And I suggest you take a look at the main link in the description, which will give you a more of a description of what all the different options are and you can use those options for whatever your application is all right guys so now i'm on my laptop and the first thing i'm gonna do is ssh to my desktop and i know that the ip of my desktop is 1.65 because i looked at it uh, via an if command on my desktop so i'm gonna open up a terminal and ssh in So now I have control of my desktop from a laptop. So first thing I want to do is launch um, Gazebo. But in, in order to do that, I want to launch it without the GUI. So I'm going to make a couple modifications to the launch file that I'm using. So I'm going to first CD to Catkin Workspace and then um, make the modifications according to the follow along. Now I'm going to open up the runway.launch file with Nano. So in order to get this to launch without the GUI, I'm going to need to add a couple different lines. And those are detailed down here. So it's arg name GUI. And then I'm going to make sure that default is true such that if I don't pass in the argument, it's going to launch with the GUI. So and then the second argument is I'm going to add this um, below the include tag such that it uses it when it launches the world. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, perfect. So now this should be ready to launch. So now let's go ahead and launch our gazebo server. But in order to do that, we're going to have to pass in that uh, GUI uh, false tag. So in order to do that, uh, type the following command. 
after runway.launch add GUI colon equals false. And boom, looks like it's working. So the last little step here is to run the gazebo server. And in order to do that, I'm gonna add another terminal SSH in my desktop and then run the gaze gazebo web server. All right, cool. So now if I go to 192.168.1.65 and then port 8080, I should be able to see my gazebo world. So let's go ahead and do that. Give it a second to load. And boom, I now have control over my gazebo world from my laptop and it is actually rendering like really, really well. If I was to run Gazebo on this laptop, it would be super, super framey and the physics would be really slow. Um, but because I'm running it on my desktop and only forwarding the graphics that I need, it's actually working out super, super well. And this is actually becomes a viable thing to do on my laptop. And the best part is I can do it from anywhere. But in order to do that, I'm going to need a VPN, which I'm going to show you guys in the next episode how to set up a VPN super easy such that you could be at a coffee shop and go to the ad address of your server on your VPN and have a secure connection and use your server from wherever you are in the world. And just to show you guys that this all works, I'm just going to launch RD Pilot and fly, fly the drone around. So enjoy that. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.